Okay, I know that that song is repetitive, but it kind of gets me pumped up a little bit. That's a fun song. So, what did we just kind of zip through there? I had a little bit of trouble getting my foot settled on that right foot control, not the one that uh, uh, Aaron from Arizona sent me with this machine. She had acquired the, the machine with that foot control, the old foot control that's under uh, amperage. And what I just plugged in was the proper foot control. And foot controls and motors, I've said this before, work in concert together. They absolutely have to. And when uh, you put a foot control that is rated at about 0.8 amps and you match it with a machine that has a motor that's rated at 1.5 amps, you're going to run into performance issues. So now that we've got it set up properly with the foot control that was designed for this Husqvarna Type 21, uh, we've got a winning team. And uh, what we just sewed through is no small task, not even for a Husqvarna Viking Type 21 with a 1.5 amp motor. We just went through three layers of genuine cowhide and we didn't just go through it and I actually put a lighter a lighter needle in this machine I was expecting to use use it for doing some of the uh, embroidery type patterns that are part of the cam system in this and uh, you may have noticed right at the launch of the machine as it was beginning to pierce through these three layers of absolutely genuine cowhide leather that needle started to bend a little bit and I said to myself in my head not aloud uh oh I should have gone with a heavier needle but we managed to get through it somehow it's a, it's really quite a quite a miracle when I shipped this machine off to Aaron out in uh, Tucson Arizona I'm gonna make sure that I put the proper needle back in I was gonna goof around and do some pretty type sewing kinda like uh, Donna has been hinting at and doing something that's a little bit more project rooted instead of just muscular like us guys like to to do and many girls as well when it comes to heavy grade sewing um, so I'm gonna have to remember to switch that needle out <laughs> oh jeez you should have if, if you could have read my body language I was having like a minor cardiac arrest as I saw that needle start to bend a little bit and that just goes to show that a needle is designed for the proper type of sewing that you're using it for and I kind of went went in in the wrong direction here I was looking at a, a lighter decorative embroidery style sewing uh, off and I ended up going heavy grade and and uh, boy we almost had an oopsie but somehow we we, we made our way through that alright enough rambling I want to show these stitches off Again, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see kind of from the side uh, what we just went through. And, and most importantly, so you can see what outcome we got. I've said this before, it doesn't matter if you, if you kind of mow through something if you're getting a result that is marginal. Now you can look at from the side right there. I'm going to zoom in and kind of just pause for a second. That's three layers of genuine cowhide leather. Uh, that Each one of those pieces unto itself is about three ounces of leather. So you're looking at about nine to 10 ounces of leather there. And this is the thick of thick. If you saw me kind of cutting it at the beginning of the video, you could see the, the grain of that leather. I mean, this that, that scissors is, that I was using is really, really sharp. Well, the first one wasn't as sharp. I actually broke the scissors trying to cut through it is why you saw me switch to another pair of scissors. So that gives you an idea of how heavy this stuff in fact is. And when I was able to get those three pieces cut and then match them up as best as I was able, look at that. I'm gonna zoom in even further if I, am, if I can. Holy mackerel. Aaron, you got bragging rights. Holy mackerel, look at that. And this machine came with a number of challenges. Uh, it had um, uh, tension issues, as you may have seen in the uh, Facebook posts. It had an uh, issue with the slow gear. And we did not sew these three layers of genuine cowhide leather 
10 to 12 ounces of genuine cowhide leather using that slow gear. Again, I want to dispel an urban legend, a myth. The slow gear is not going to give you an edge on sewing through this type of material, this many layers. That slow gear is intended to give you an edge in being able to have greater maneuverability, greater control over that speed style foot control that tends to really want to get that 1.5 amp motor going full throttle. So, you know, if, if in your world you believe that the Husqvarna slow gear is going to help you sew through this much leather, let me encourage you to give it a try. Give it a try and then reach out to me and let me know what the outcome is. I can already tell you what the outcome is going to be. You're going to find that that machine is going to stall out on you as you're trying to go through this many layers and this thickness of genuine cowhide leather because that wasn't the purpose of the Swedish giving us that wonderful slow gear where it reduces that motor down to about one-fifth the speed that it normally is. It just gears it down just like a 10-speed bike and it allows you to really manage and harness that power so that when you're doing some real tight cornering, you're doing some edge work on quilts and you just need to really, really be able to harness that power and the speed of the machine, that's why we are so fortunate to have the slow gear that the Swedish gave us. But let me tell you, it's not going to help you do the sewing like this. You're going to want the full burst and the full power of that 1.5 amp motor and, I have to say, the proper needle, which I didn't use to get through a job like this. So let me just say this, that when you look at a stitch like this, I'm going to start on the end again, and oh my gosh, what we just accomplished is absolutely nuts, especially considering... Uh, the type of needle that I had in this machine, a needle that was intended for decorative and embroidery type sewing, and we just fudged it out, folks. We totally fudged it. Yes, we did. All right, let me pause there for a second and flip this around uh, so that you can see that lock stitch as well. I've said it a, a million times. Who gives a, a hoot that you can sew through? Let's go like this. I think you'll be able to see it better. Who gives a hoot? If you can sew through this many ounces of genuine cowhide leather, if the final result when you go through this many layers is that you're going to get a marginal uh, lock stitch. That is an absolutely gorgeous lock stitch in every respect. What you're not able to see is because of the nap of that leather, you're not able to see the definition of that stitch as more as much as, as you should be able to. But if I get down by that uh, leather and I pull it apart, matter of fact, why don't I do that? You're going to be able to see that stitch definition much easier. As a matter of fact, let's go right there. And I do have my screen turned around. Yay! So, we go like this. The whole idea... Whoops. The whole idea is to get it on camera, Scott. The whole idea is to have good stif stitch definition on that top stitch and on that lock stitch and you can see with your own eyes there that we definitely definitely achieve that not to mention we went through about 10 to 12 ounces of genuine cowhide leather with the wrong needle and yet because of the way that I've restored and resolved the issues with Aaron's um, Husqvarna Viking Type 21 with that 1.5 amp motor it showed grace to me and it said you know what you're using the wrong needle there master sewer scott but we're going to make it right anyway because of the other work that you put into this machine that is an absolutely gorgeous lock stitch and again looking at it from here at that top stitch that finishing stitch right there try to move it all the way across that's exactly what we're looking for folks right there that's exactly what we're looking for. When you can achieve a stitch like this through this much leather and get an outcome like this, that's, that's exactly what we're looking for. Exactly. Well, keeping it on camera is what we're looking for too. <laughs> I'm kind of rattled by the mistake I made. 
you know, that is an absolute amateur mistake in getting everything set up, going to that painstaking preparation of getting ready to shoot this video, and then forgetting to, to change out the needle because I decided, I decided to launch this video with an impossible task of going through these three layers of genuine cowhide leather. And somehow we did it, you know. All I can say is, wow. <laughs> I sometimes surprise myself. I sometimes surprise myself. Okay, enough gabbing. What I want to do now is walk you folks through um, some of the other outputs that this great Viking can do. And I'm going to go right about, probably right about there. I think that'll be fairly okay. And I'm going to lock it in place. Because what I want to show you is that there's a little bit of a trick to accessing the various stitches that are built into this machine. You may have seen from the Facebook posts that we have Cam C in this machine right now. We have Cam C, right? And Cam C is going to have the zigzag that's always going to be on each of the Husqvarna Viking uh, cams because it does what? If you were listening before, you know this answer. It sets the boundaries for the swing of that needle so that that needle doesn't inadvertently swing outside of the scope that it's intended to do and strike the needle plate or strike the edge of the throat plate. That's why you saw me in that video that I posted on Facebook and on YouTube hand cranking off after the timing was adjusted on Aaron's machine, hand cranking so that I could very gently and very carefully check the parameter and the swing of each of the stitches that this machine can do because if you just make an adjustment on a machine whether you're skilled or unskilled and you throttle that that, that foot control you're going to potentially damage that machine if you got it wrong so even with my level of experience I hand crank it to make sure absolutely for sure that I've got it right. The same thing is true when you're putting a, a new attachment on one of your machines that you maybe never used on that machine before. You always, 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 always hand crank that, uh, that needle uh, until you make sure that it's going to clear that attachment properly. The same thing is true of cam output as well with any machine, not just the Husqvarna Viking. So what you're going to see is that Right now we've got the stitch width control, which is right here, set on zero because we are doing that impossible sew through of those three layers of this heavy gray genuine cowhide leather, which by the way was a complete victory. And I planned to put the wrong needle in this machine so I could just show, oh my gosh, Scott is so good at restoring the power even more so than what the machine had when it left the factory he doesn't even have to put the right needle in it to achieve the impossible this is the impossible right here but that would be a, mu a bunch of malarkey because i made a mistake and we still got it done anyway i continue to revert back because i'm just blown away that's absolutely crazy okay so back to the cam stitches that this machine can can do okay Right now we've got the stitch width on zero. We're going to want to move it somewhere between 0.5 and 4 when we're looking at accessing those uh, decorative stitches. Also what, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure that when we move any of these dials that that needle is out of the fabric. It's clear of the fabric. you got to really be careful about that folks or you'll end up bending the needle which would not be good. And hopefully I didn't bend this needle going through all that leather. I guess we'll find out shortly. So. Once you decide what you want that stitch, that stitch width to be set at, I put it on, let's see, right about 1.5, just shy of, of, of 2. Um, and then you have to decide, okay, what do you want your stitch length to be at? Do you want it long? It's set on 4 right now. I'm going to move it up to about 2. And we've already got the cam setting on number 5. So let's go ahead and see if we can zip down and see what result we get. Remember, it's not a done deal. When you are testing the output of a machine and you're adjusting your stitch width, your stitch length, you can always change it to something else to get a different look on that stitch. You're not stuck with what I generate on this sew-off right now. You can get something totally different. You might not even like 
the look of what we end up generating with this first stitch off on number five. So you can change it, that's your prerogative. All right, here we go. This is gonna be again, we're set on about 1.5 on stitch width, on two on stitch length, and we're set on number five as far as the cam setting. Here we go. Well, that needle held up. Kudos to Schmetz. I love Schmetz needles. All of you know that already, right? Schmetz are a German-made needle, and uh, they are about all that I use. I even would put them in front of the Husqvarna Viking uh, needles that I have as well. I really would. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show all these at the end. We're just going to zip through to the next one. So I'm going to put this back underneath the presser foot. That was again number five. Now, the, the only little trick, if you will, in working with the green machines is that when you're looking to move to that next position on the stitch selector for that cam generation, you don't want to try to move it necessarily without, first of all, zeroing out the stitch width. Because that's going to basically reset that cam so that then I'm able to move easily from number five to number four, which is what I just did, you can force it, but then you end up potentially damaging the gear settings back there that will allow that uh, that little uh, follower to uh, track along that cam and the, to follow the pattern that's engineered into that cam. You always want to reset that stitch width, width to zero and then bring it back to your desired setting. We're not going to change the stitch length up here at all. So I'm going to move it back to, we were right around two if I remember correctly. And we're going to sew off the next pattern, which is pattern number four. Here we go. Okay, so that's pattern number four. Again, I don't even necessarily know if I will like the look of these stitch patterns, but it's something we can change easily by making adjustments. So we're just going to sew them off right now. Mainly I'm wanting you to be able to hear just how gorgeous Aaron's Type 21 runs now that it's been on my workbench. Aaron also had an issue with the feed dog drop as well where those feed dogs were not functioning properly. They were not fully engaging. And that was causing a lot of issues along with the problems with the uh, upper tension as well. You may have seen that in Facebook as well where to that music bed, totally, totally disassembled the uh, the the stitch length. No, a correction. That wasn't a, a music bed. That was the Kennedy inaugural address back in '61, and that made a difference as well in how that stitch presented. The only adjustment I'm going to make a little bit here is, first of all, we have to remember zero the stitch width because we're going to want to move from pattern four where we are right now over to pattern three. There we go, and I'm going to move it back to two which is our width, but now I'm going to shorten it a little bit more on length. I'm going to move it from 2 to about 1.5, just because I want to see what I can do with this next decorative type stitch. Here we go. Make sure you bring your needle all the way up. Get that out of the material. Doesn't this run beautifully? Any of you that have made a New Year's resolution or you've been making New Year's resolutions for who knows decades now about getting a machine like Aaron's. And this machine Aaron sent to me. She mailed it all the way from Tucson, Arizona uh, because this is the best place to send a machine if you want it to run uh, perfectly and run beautifully and run better than when it left the factory in the 50s. Yeah, I'm bragging a little bit. I get it. Okay, so we're going to move to the next stitch pattern. I'm going to go ahead and zero out the stitch width and we're going to move to cam pattern two. Two. Let's try that again. Yes, I hurt my finger if you see that in the camera. And then we're going to set this back at two on the stitch width and 
we're going to go ahead and shorten that even just slightly more. I'm going to go ahead and put the material. And incidentally, I didn't even mention it at the outset of this. We're, we're doing two layers of U.S. Army grade canvas, obviously. So I shouldn't say obviously, should I? I should have told you that at the beginning. So along with using the wrong needle, but this is the right needle now. See that? That was forward thinking. I, I started with the wrong needle, but now we didn't have to change the needle in order to get the best outcome on this U.S. Army grade canvas. You're not buying it, are you? Okay, that's fine. All right, so this is going to be pattern number two on Cam C for the Husker, Husqvarna Viking Type 21, which belongs to Aaron from Tucson, Arizona. And again, we've got it on Cam setting two. We've got our stitch width on two. We've got our stitch length on about 1.5. Let's see what we get. Here we go. All right, so that's cam setting two. And we got one more stitch off to do, folks. We're gonna do cam setting number one. So we kind of went backwards. We went from five to four to three to two. And now we're gonna do one. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip these threads. I just love the way a machine that's been properly uh, serviced and restored runs, don't you? You just don't get that hum from the newer machines. You just don't. There's no way you can just because of the components and the parts that they uh, utilize in them. So, um, and I'm going to make another adjustment here. I'm going to zero it out. I'm going to go all the way down to number one. And actually, sometimes you have to also work that needle a little bit too to allow you to go to the next pattern. I'm trying to get it to go here, folks. Give me a second. There we go. It Even when it's properly serviced, it, sometimes these cam sliders, because they're going in and out, will stick a little bit. So that one had a little bit of a, a stickiness to it. I may have to check that again. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this back to, uh, actually, you know what, let's mess around. We had it on two for the majority of the time. Let's go ahead and move it down to about 1.5. We already have the stitch length up here at 1.5. And now we're on cam stitch uh, number one. And we'll go ahead and do this final sew off on Aaron's machine. I should also mention, by the way, the extension bed that you can see that's attached to Aaron's machine actually is going to go with Francine's machine. When Aaron sent me her Type 21, she didn't send the extension bed, which is perfectly fine because I have uh, extra Husqvarna uh, extension beds usually on hand that I can match with the machine when I'm doing different things. But I decided to put Francine's extension bed on hers just so we could have that workspace. And again, like the recent video where I was contrasting Mary Ann's Husqvarna Viking Platinum 750 and talking about the harp space and the work area, I wanted to demonstrate because a lot of the recent videos I did with Husqvarna's, I did not put that extension bed on. And I think that was a mistake because then you really don't have a visual of what that workspace, that crazy huge workspace looks like. And I think it's important to remind ourselves of that each and every time. So if any of you again have made a resolution that you're going to finally get a fully restored Husqvarna Viking green machine from Scott, you can look at it in its totality. So that was a shameless plug, by the way. That was totally a shameless plug. But you know what? Point well taken, right? Make a re New Year's resolution to finally get one of these machines. They're, 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 they will transform your world of sewing. They really will. All right. So again, we have the cam setting on a number one. Stitch length 1.5, stitch width 1.5. Here we go. All right, I'm going to throttle up a little bit, okay, folks, just to finish this final sew off. <laughs> I 
I love this machine. Oh, Aaron, I've got to make excuses for not sending this back to you. I want to play on it more. Okay, I've got my own toys. You're right. You're all right. I heard you. All right. So, once again, the way these stitches look is absolutely arbitrary and subjective because I didn't follow the manual's recommendations on settings for width and length and in the original manuals for these green machines they'll actually give you recommended settings for the various stitch outputs I didn't follow that I'm a rebel I decided to do my own thing and uh, that may not have been a great idea because I've sewn according to the manufacturer's settings before and the stitches in my opinion probably look a little bit better than mine do but that's okay so this is our first one right here if I if I don't have it backwards and I don't think I do this was um, the first stitch we did which would have been uh, cam setting number five and you can kind of see there um, I think those are absolutely gorgeous it's kind of a, almost like a stretch zigzag stitch that we generated spectacular this is number four. Number three. Number two. Yeah, see if I had shortened, shortened the width on that one, the number two a little bit, that would have been a real pretty scallop kind of a, a soft not so pretty scallop but you get the idea and if you buy one of my machines we can give you a book so you can set it properly <laughs> and that's number one the last one on the the uh, top there all right all right let me zoom out on this awesome type 21 Husqvarna Viking sent to me from uh, Aaron out in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and it will soon be returning to Erin out in Tucson, Arizona. I know she's totally stoked. She's also totally stoked that I um, was able to locate the proper foot control for her and get rid of that one that she had gotten with the machine. That again is, you know, is no small matter, folks. You've got to make sure when you're working with sewing machines that you're looking at the amperage factor whether it's the type of brushes that you're putting into that machine and it, they can just be thousands of an inch off and it will your your machine might run but like i demonstrated in that one video recently with uh, sharon's featherweight you've got to get it down to a science if you want to absolutely have the optimal performance from that sewing machine and when you're matching a, a, an incredible Swedish 1.5 amp uh, machine like this, and you're putting it with a 0.8, I think this was probably one that was put out by Mercury. Um, it's been painted, so I can't really tell. But, you know, the machine ran with this because someone had rewired it and put a, a proper plug on it for the Type 21. The Type 21, if you hopefully you can see it in the shot, instead of using the slanted plug-in, it uses almost like a European type plug-in, like I used when I was in Europe for three years, where you would plug things into the outlet. It has those uh, almost like a tubular type plug-in. You probably can't see it. I can bring it up a little bit and show it to you like that. But that's the type of plug-in you need for a Type 21. And this is the same type of plug-in that will be on Francine's machine uh, as well. But again, matching it with the correct, give me a second here, folks matching it with the correct foot control makes all the difference in the world along with all the other things that you may have seen that i did to this machine and some things that i didn't post on facebook that i had to do to uh, aaron's machine as well but getting the proper foot control to marry up with that motor whatever the machine is be real careful with that i've had other people that have contacted me and said you know i i went on ebay or I contacted someone on Craigslist and they said they had a, a, a foot control that would work with my machine and I used it and it worked but after using it for a little bit it was would always get super hot 
And I asked them, I said, well, what's the rating on the foot control? And they would usually tell me like 0.6 amps, 0.7 amps. Well, what kind of machine are you using it on? Oh, you're using it on a, a Foff 130 or a Husqvarna Viking 21A? I think I know why it's overheating because that motor is rated way above an average of what your foot control is and usually it should be the opposite. You generally want to have a little bit more tolerance on the foot control end so that if you've got a say a, a, a one amp machine you want that foot control to be rated just a little bit higher you know if it's equal okay but preferably you would want to have that foot control rated like for 1.2 amps versus just the one amps because then the two are gonna almost like adjusting tension like the uh, the bobbin carrier and the upper tension they're gonna kind of fight against each other with that amperage factor back and forth and you're gonna get either inconsistent performance or you're gonna get underperformance from that machine so at any rate, it's really been a lot of fun to get Aaron's machine back on track, resolving the tension issues, taking care of the, the feed dog issue that she had as well, addressing the slow gear, and most importantly, getting the proper foot control with her Type 21 so that when she gets us back in Tucson, Arizona, and if she did a little bit of goofing around on it before and kind of saw the power and performance and maybe the outcome, she's going to be like, Wow! Are you serious? And he did that with the wrong needle. Did you have to bring that up again? The wrong needle thing, really? Okay, I brought it up. You know what, it's important that you know that your mentor, your coach, your teacher, here, I make mistakes too. And uh, thankfully in this case it worked out okay, but I'm gonna, as soon as this video ends, I'm gonna swap that needle out. 